Hello guys, my name is Kevin and welcome to this new video. Just before the actual video starts, I want to inform you about one thing, and that is that during my holidays, I caught a call. So I may sound a little bit different, so sorry for that, but seriously, I can't change anything about it. Now to the actual video. As I got back into the game, I got to play tons of games as a tier 3s and 4s just laying around the bottom tier. So I got one thing to say. Wargaming. There's no chance in hell that any of these is going to penetrate any of these. So how the brick do you expect me to play them? Either way, that kinda sums up why I know so much about low tiers. So now, you can't call me a filthy seal clubber. Wait, 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 wait. Anyways, tier 5s. I'm allergic to just hearing that word. They are, what would you call, the exact mid-tier of War of Tank. For most of us, they are known as the guys that used to bully us way back when we were just a small little cute bastards. On this tier, you can finally see that some vehicles require some skill in order to be useful and some simply do not. Unlike on lower tiers where basically half the tanks are entirely useless with no chance of getting a decent game and half the tanks is just plainly overpowered with plainly overpowered stats. By this I am not saying that there are no OP tanks on tier 5. If there were any I would just simply skip the tier 5 list and go onto the tier 6 list. There are but they already need some skill to play because people at this tier are finally finding an organ inside of their body which they've never used before and it is called mouth because they freaking suck. No, the real reason is that there are already some great players playing this tier. I for example had a friend that did not want to invest any money into this game, so to earn money he had to play tier 5 and 6 tanks constantly. You can now only imagine how a platoon of 3 players with 20,000 games each looked in a tier 5 matchmaking. Anyways, let's not waste the time anymore and let's start a list with this quick French light tank called MX ELC Biz. This tank is an exact explanation of what I was talking about for the past 2 minutes. Ridiculously OP tank that requires a lot of skill to play. You are either the best or the worst at it, there is nothing in between. You will either deal 2000 damage and 4000 spotting damage in a tier 8 game or you will die in the first 2 minutes of a tier 6 game, nothing in between. Either way, this thing has one other thing that is kinda weird about it and that is that it wasn't actually created before or during the World War II. Instead of that, it was made around the Vietnam War. Now to the actual weird thing. This thing had to fly. Or parachute to be correct. Yes, you heard correctly, this tank had to fly. British people wanted to create a tank that could swim, a literal submarine, whilst Frenchies wanted to create a parachuting tank. No matter how ridiculous it may sound, it is the reason why this tank is so light. And because it is a Vietnam War era tank, it gets a great engine and a gun to go with it. Sadly the gun had to be seriously nerfed from its real life state because otherwise it would be just plainly impossible to play against it. Still the gun is quite powerful, high penetration and alpha which you are definitely going to need in tier 8 games in which you might quite commonly find yourself in. But those are not the stats you want your gun to have at tier 5. At tier 5 you want your gun to have high dpm as there is still quite a lot of people thinking that their tank has the highest dpm in a game for some reason. But that is where your mobility starts taking effect. You can just force enemy to trade shots with you and by this turn the fight to your advantage. Now what if I told you that this tank isn't even supposed to fight? It's primarily a scout. Its low profile gives it an insane camouflage ratings and its high mobility makes a room for emergency exits and repositioning. Lastly its armor is obviously paper. Overall this tank is a hell of a lot of fun to play but only if you know how to play it. If you got zero knowledge about light tanks, don't even try to buy this no. You will quit the game quicker than you will learn how to play this thing, trust me. The fourth thing on this list is one of Japanese behemoths which are known for free things. Their big guns, astonishing size and this great wall of Japan as I like to call it. But the tier 5 variant of these tanks is a bit different. It sacrifices its frontal armor for a great top speed. And to my, and probably even your surprise, this 100 ton heavy monstrosity can actually get to that 40 km top speed thanks to its illogically great ground resistances and a good engine. Just imagine a tank as heavy as half the mouse going at a speed that is probably equal to the T-34 or the M4 Sherman. Another thing that this tank has is a great 300 alpha damage gun, which is 
not so derpy in fact. Not only that it fires primarily AP rounds, but it is in fact the most accurate tier 5 heavy tank gun. But that's not all. What if I told you that it actually has above average DPM, unlike the ELC AMX best? So if you get to shoot at the enemy first, you will always outrate them in damage unless you roll really, really low. Lastly, this tank has pretty bad armor. Well, at least for a heavy tank. Its front armor is nearly entirely flat with only 75mm in its thickest parts. This means that every 85mm and higher penetration gun will cut through your frontal armor like nothing. But we are still on a tier 5, which means that the penetration of different tanks is still quite a bit bouncy. Some of the tanks will cut through your frontal plate like through nothing, while some of the tanks will bounce even from your rear armor. Overall, this tank isn't that entertaining to play, unless you play with one or two of your platoon buddies. In this, this tank is actually quite similar to the KV-2 or the TOC-2 or basically any enormous or derpy heavy tank in a game. You simply need somebody to take down those pesky light and medium tanks that will try to circle you out or use your weak spots. This one, for example. But if I could say one thing that you could do to increase the amount of fun that you will have from playing this tank, ram the shit out of people. This is by far the best tier 4 tier rammer in a game. It weighs 100 tons. Majority of the tier 10 tanks doesn't weigh as much. And I'm talking about heavies. The third tank on this list is gonna be Bishop. And I'm gonna tell you one thing. I absolutely hate this tank. I can't play it. In like 100 games that I've played with it, I haven't had a single great game. But I've gotta give it one thing, and that is that it has actually quite an impressive armor. I could even say that its armor is as thick as the one on OI Experimental, and that is already something to say. But its armor isn't the reason why it is so powerful. The real reason is its gun. Now, it doesn't have some ridiculous alpha damage like the S51, where you can one shot a tier 8 heavy without the need to roll some exceptionally high. No. This tank will have troubles one shotting a tier 4 lighty, and that is already something to say. However, it is one of the fastest firing artillery guns in a game. With this rate of fire, you can keep the enemy perma D track, and if not, you will at least annoy the shell out of them. Ardent module damage and crew killing, the fast rate of fire makes those random penetrations much more of a common occurrence, and plus to that, you won't feel like it was too much of an overkill, because let's face it, you wouldn't be capable of one-shotting them anyways. Now look at those professional strategies that this guy is pulling off. Going full British mode by pretending to be a submarine. I bet that it gives him like 50% more damage. Anyways, now back to this potato shooter. Thankfully, people in Wargaming had some brain and thought that if an artillery tank has such a ridiculous firepower, it should have at least some drawback. And they gave it only 350 meters firing range. The second spot is taken by my possibly most hated tank. Well, long time ago, when I was for the first time around the tier 4, there was that holy trinity of heavy tanks that kept on destroying me. But other than this trio, there was one other tank that kept on kicking my ass. Was it the T67? Yes, it fucking was. This tank is played only and exclusively by set pairs, as there is really no other use to such a tank. Firstly, it has the speed of a light tank, which is nothing impressive at all until you realize that it is a fucking TD. With a gun that actually does more than just firing dry plums at the enemies. It has 2150 DPM, which is just plainly insane at a tier 5. There is only one other tank firing AP rounds with comparable DPM, and that is the T34. But compared to it, T67 doesn't need to rely on the hand of a goddamn Stellan in order to hit anything. The only thing that this tank doesn't have is armor. But who the hell needs it if you got a speed and camouflage like this? Simply said, this tank is so overpowered that a human with a normal mind feels like it is just unfair to play against the same tier opponents. And just not even fun to play. And now to the most overpowered tier 5 tank, which is gonna be the Lefeur. Or Lefeu if you prefer it like that. This thing is a fast firing artillery. Again. But compared to the bishop, it loses 40 alpha damage and reduces its reload time by 4 seconds. Meaning that this tank actually has the second highest tier 5 damage per minute. And no, I'm not counting only artillery. But it must have some kind of drawback, otherwise no, it doesn't. Not even the bishop's limited firing range. This RT can fire all around the map and detract anything it wants until they ult f4. And now to the little cherry on top of this huge pile of bullshit. 
It has 15 degrees of gun traverse to both of the sides, triple that of bishops. So it can cover the third of the map without the need to make itself less accurate by turning. So let's sum it up. You got an artillery that can fire all around the map, distract anything it wants permanently, one shot every single lightly armored tank and it can cover third of the map without needing to move its bullshit ass from one single place. Yeah, Wargaming's balance in a nutshell. Anyways, this is gonna be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a like. If you did not, please give it a like because I wanna know whether or not I. Uh, what the fuck am I even saying? This video was so ridiculously boring that even I got bored from making. And that is already something to say. So I am canceling the series. They didn't get the support I was expecting. Someday I might return to them. But for today, I just want to inform you that I'll try to start a different kinds of series slash videos, which will hopefully be more fun to make and mainly more entertaining to watch. Anyways, happy new year and bye!